How was your Thanksgiving, Brian? You know, I have no complaints. It was very low key. I had some family come over and we just kind of hung out. And uh, I'm a very low key kind of holiday guy. This, you know, I don't need a television show made about my house by holidays like a lot of people i think uh, we didn't get drunk we didn't act stupid we didn't do any of that stuff so no keeping very, up very lucky. no keeping up with the curtises is that what you're saying no there's nothing to keep up with i mean you can <laughs> keep up with us by being awake you know we're, uh, <laughs> we're pretty, like, pretty sure pretty sure you got the hang of it it's one episode that's it exactly nice so yeah we, we we did a lot of family stuff too so it was great um i think i'm done drinking and uh hanging out so i feel like i need to be purposeful and do some stuff now and i'm happy to be back to work this week to be frank with you everybody welcome to cash call dale archdeacon brian curtis back for another riveting week of what did the hell did they say uh on the recording or oh my god look at what they said that's amazing um, so I've got a couple of, you know, I'm super good at finding stuff that's wrong. I think it was a, it was a result of my, of, of my parents, honestly, um, being amazing at finding what's wrong. So now they've passed those skills on to me and I'm really good at it. Uh, I got valuable two. Set. It's really a valuable skill set. It really is. <laughs> so, I mean that Thanks. in the most sincere way. Thanks uh, mom and dad. All right. What about you? you got anything to listen to today? I've got a call just in case, but you know, I, I really like the format and what, we'll, you know, we'll play my call. My thought is if we, uh, if we don't have questions, but I really want to remind everybody um, we'd love to play one or two calls and then just do questions because I feel like that gives a direct value to our audience. And so yes. remember now, if you have questions, thoughts about anything Dale happens to say or do now, or if you're just coming in here going, man, I got this, got this issue. I'm not, I don't know how to deal with it. I don't know how to handle this objection. Don't know, but, you know, please put that in the chat and uh, we'll cover that at the end. Yep. There we go. All right. So if you guys do have questions, chat them in, let us know, but uh, let's, uh, I'll, I'll start with mine. Um, let me see over here. Let me find the right screen. Somehow, you know, I put the right screen in and then I, and then I lose it. So I want to, I want to play this, this one first. Uh, and I want to demonstrate when to shut up. How about that? Perfect. Love huh. that. Can we do that one? Yeah. Two ears, one mouth, right? That's so you can listen yes. twice as much as you talk. Hello? Hi, is this Mike? Yes. Hi, Mike. This is Lori with Bear Dorn. My mom. <laughs> I'm good. Thank you for calling. Um, sure. What can I do? So, I'm just, so I'm a North Sider, um, but my, my mom is lives in Mount Greenwood, mm -hmm. and uh, she's by herself, and she's looking to sell her house. Okay. And one of the neighbors uh, just used you guys, Bird and Warner, for uh, a sale, and she wanted me to reach out. And uh, so that's the brokerage, right? So he just said somebody used someone from your company to sell their. Somebody else just used somebody from your company to sell their house. Set up. Uh, and my mom wants me to reach out to you. That is literally a come list me call if there ever seriously, was. Seriously, let's let's not screw this one up. Right. To set up a meet and greet with you guys, like walk to the house and and just basically. See about listing it. Okay. Yeah, that's fantastic. What? Let's start with this. Um, what? So, where is she going to go? She already has. A Which that's a good question. So we do a little bit of discovery, but then I want to get farther down into here, and this is where we need to stop selling past the sale, which is a very, it's like one of those basic sales tenants, right? This guy past the close. Yeah, this guy just basically came in closed, right? Mm -hmm. This literally is a come list me call. Nine six zero. Okay. Um, and do you guys have any idea what you're what you're hoping to get for it? Well, you know, I I briefly looked at. And by the way, she's doing good discovery stuff here. Where's the mom going? Have you thought how much you wanted to give for it, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to help set up. This is an ISA. It's going to help set up the listing agent who goes on the appointment. And even if this was the listing agent, they'd still want to ask those questions. So let me ask you this, Dale. As I sit and listen to this, when it's a, this much of a come list me, for me, you know, I still believe that rapport is the first thing. This woman has plenty of rapport. And then generally I do discovery appointment. But if somebody's basically saying, come list me, I'm going to skip discovery, do appointment and come back to discovery. Do you, do you agree with that? Or do you? Generally... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I agree with that. I certainly would do that too. Great. What day and time works for you and your mom? Okay. Just perfect. Like you said, 
then yeah. I'm going to go into the questions, just like a Zillow lead, right? Oh, yes. hey, it looks like you want to go see this property. What? When would you like to go see it? Monday at six. Great. Monday at six. Let's get it on the books. Now I'm going to ask you discovery questions. Yeah, because in the discovery, and this is not going to happen very often, but you could theoretically blow the appointment. Yes, you can. So, uh, And there was an opportunity in this one, but we're not going to listen to that part of it. Good. It's a little too long. Uh, basically, she like pushed him on what kind of, what, what, what he was looking for in an agent. And he initially joked and said, oh, uh, I don't know, long walks on a beach. And she said, oh, no, but really, like, what kind of person are you looking for? Because this, that, and the other. And then he's like, oh, well, my mom is a born again Christian, by the way. Uh, and so then we get into this murky area of, uh oh, now do I have to have like, now do I got to find another like Christian to send out there? Or, and it's because she pushed too far into that weird territory and could have capsized the call as a result. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, and again, when pe people will say stuff like that, like, hey, I'm a this, this and this. Are you a this, this and this? And that's, a, you know, are you a Republican? Are you a Democrat? Are you an independent? Do you believe in greens? You know, there's so many things. Do you want me to be? Yeah. Do you, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm, and, and, hey, I'm just like you. And then I would move on to my next question. <laughs> yeah. But those are minefields we do not want to be involved no. in. So, right. you know, we don't want to talk politics. We don't want to talk religion as a baseline. Even if you happen to 100% agree with the person on this topic, how do you know, okay, so yeah, I'm pro-life, you're pro-life, or I'm pro-choice, you're pro-choice. And all of a sudden we go over to this and go, but yeah, I don't believe that part of it. Like it, it's a minefield we do not want to be in. So steer away. Cops in the area. Uh -huh. I, I don't know, and I'm not an expert, but uh, I would just, you know, I, I, honestly, even though the house is a little needs to be updated, you know, uh, um, she could probably get two for it. Um, but I, uh, it's a nice size lot, you know, in this market, you know, God, who knows, right? Right, right. Probably no. two. Okay. Um, and, and this is, she's in a really good situation too, not having to turn around and purchase because it is such a seller's market and, um, you know, buyers are, are kind of struggling. I mean, it's a little bit better at this time of the year than it was in the spring and summer. I mean, places were getting so many bids and the prices were bidding. We're into stop talking land now, by the way, everybody who's listening to this, this is literally a come list me who says, I don't know. I'm not firm on a price. We have a place for my mom to go. I want to meet with you guys. And now she's getting into the market, seller's market, buyer market, which way it's up or down, where it's going. And, it, and she continues on with this. And, and in the training uh, with her, with her team, I said, what are you doing right now in this conversation? She goes, I'm just rattling. Yes. And we're also giving up, you're like arguing for uh, them selling it. And in some cases, even like taking it back a little bit, but She's literally like negotiating with herself and put, trying to convince somebody who's already sold that now is a good time to do something. And that is, that's dangerous. You don't need Dreamly. to do that. It's just extra. There's no, the only thing you're going to do is accidentally change a yes to a no. You're not going to make it yes, sir. Not going to make it yes, sir. And, yeah. and here's, here's a real good thing to remember too. Every agent is better in person. So if we do have to go down some of these murky places, do that in person because I can go through and, and get all kinds of commitments. I can get, I can do tie downs. I can do trial closes and then I can cover that stuff. So, and I can build a lot more rapport in person. Um, yeah. Don't, and, and don't have 20 minute conversations about nothing. I hear them all the time. Like it scares the crap out of me when I go through my CRM and I see, oh, call 43 minutes. I'm like, what on earth could you have possibly talked <laughs> about for 43 minutes? And I wish I was making that up, by the way. I know. So, you know, I, that was either a therapy out. session or you ax almost talking yourself out of a deal. Yeah. And, and, you know, Dale said this and I'll repeat it don't talk past the close. Great. Sign, sign above here. Great. I'll, I'll sign the contract. And, but th don't do this once you've asked them to close and they're, they're, they're waiting, shut up. And that, that's the hardest, hardest, hardest thing to do, in my opinion, 
you know, that 30 seconds when they're just thinking about it or maybe just having a quick conversation with themselves to not come in and say, but this, but this, but this. no, shut up. Shut up is one of the most powerful tools in, in thing. I shout out to Diana Kokoska. I heard this is let the silence do the heavy lifting. And I love that concept. Just you ask a closing question, you shut up. We have a, a question from Alex. So let's, uh, well, thanks, Alex. We're going to hold that one. Brian, why don't we go to your call? And then uh, once we're done with that, we can jump over and answer Alex's call. <clears throat> hey, sir. My name's Micah. I got your request for Gabrielle Lane in Benville. Yes. Okay. Did you want me to go ahead and set up a showing for you? No, because I'm in New Jersey. Maybe so that's aggressive and I like that aggressive. I just want to throw that out there. This is a Zillow call, by the way. When you're getting these signed calls, Zillow calls, realtor.com calls, those ones, I'm actually a fan of that aggressiveness. Great. Would you like to set up an appointment? Kind of like Dale and I were talking about in the last one. So I think you fall into the same camp, if I recall. So your house is in Arizona. Okay. Um, the, the house is actually in Arkansas and you know some options that we have for you are virtual showings. I guess one of my first questions is what kind of, did you have some questions on it or how can I help you? I need to ask you some questions. Uh, one of the conditions that I want is if I can uh, put, let's say, $100,000 down because I'm going to pay cash with a condition that I'm going to sell the house here in New Jersey. Okay. I don't yeah. know if the sellers, I, I don't know if the sellers, they're going to accept that. You know, um, Manny, I think that I can tell you, based on what I know about this property, it's been on the market for a little while. I, I would think that depending on what your property looks like, where you're at in New Jersey, you know, the price point and everything, I think they definitely entertain that. Okay. So I, I want to talk about that because it's a, it's a question you cannot answer. And I feel like he answered that question very well without answering the question. And I don't know if, what your thoughts are on that, but, you know, he, uh, obviously I, like, I don't know. I like the way I like what he said, with the exception of I would omit it's been on the market for a while because I don't know how that's going to read for this person. Right. Fair enough. That could read as, oh, great, I might get a deal. Or it could read as what the hell's wrong with it? Why has it been on the market a long time? Or it could, unfortunately, we've run into this where it's like, oh, well, then I want to pay half whatever it says there. Right. And, and I will let you know, you know, obviously you're not familiar with our market. You don't know this one, but so our average sales price is about 275 year to date. At least that's my team's average sales price. This house is listed for 775. So he's it, from New Jersey. He right. can't comprehend a house for 275. That makes no sense. Right. So this is a luxury home in our market. And, and so I might say that, so this is a luxury home in our market. And because of that, they generally don't move quite as quickly as, you know, our, our market median. So, you know, they may be a little bit more flexible. So yeah, without that information, I completely understand where you're coming from. What's wrong with this house? Absolutely nothing. It's luxury and luxury doesn't move as fast. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I think the point is that just like we're talking about not talking past the sale um, and, you know, the example of this uh, agent pushed in and got stuck in like born again Christian land, uh, <laughs> you just don't know how people are going to read things. And we already like I, you hear a huge difference, North Jersey versus Arkansas, right? We hear them on the phone. <clears throat> they talk differently. And to be on the safe side. Let's not go one way or the other, right? Whether houses on the market are a good, a long time or a good thing or a bad thing, right? Let's kind of remain neutral and throw out any particular, any potential information that could be misinterpreted uh, from what we mean it in the way that we mean it to be interpreted. Cool. Let me play a little bit more. From your experience, uh, uh, I was thinking for, to make an offer for 690 like I said, with a condition yeah. that I'm going to put, I can put a hundred thousand dollars down payment and then give me some time to sell the house here. And this is one of the most important. And the second question that I have, do they sell the house with the furniture or with no furniture? Typically like customary, they don't sell it with the furniture, but I can always ask and see if it's negotiable. Okay. So the main question,
I want to point out another thing that we've been talking about a lot. I noticed, and, and this is this is the correct way to handle this. Seven out of ten agents we listen to, Dale, say this. Let me ask the listing agent if he's doing really good. Sold. He didn't bring it. He goes, let me just check. He didn't say who he was going to check with. He didn't say he was going to check with the seller. He just said, let me check. And that is a the in my opinion the best approach for stuff like that you know somebody asked me about this doing role play this morning are you saying that we lie to the set to a person about whether it was a listing agent absolutely not no. but you don't have to tell them on the front end you're not the listing agent if someone <laughs> says are you the listing agent be 100 honest right right I, yeah i love to use a dating analogy right okay. listen uh, you know, if if my wife asked me if I have some sort of annoying habit when we first started dating, it's not like I would lie and say, no, I don't. But I'm not going to start the conversation by saying, hey, guess what? I have this really annoying habit. How do you feel about it? Right. I, I smoke. I drink too much. I don't follow <laughs> up. I'm kind of a jerk. Like no one right. says that when they I'm go kind on of, a date. Right? Kind of judgmental. Right. <laughs> right. I'm not going to be like, hey, this is why. And by the same token, I'm not lying. I'm just simply omitting. Uh, and I'm not bringing it to your attention in case it causes a problem, right? Absolutely. So cool. Hey, I'm going to fast forward to this. And one of the things I want to show is at the end of this call, what he did. And I think it's important. Hopefully I didn't fast forward too far. Talk to there. Yes, sir. Why they, they call me that Alex is it's going to call me. I don't know why they say that. Before. Anyhow, whatever. Okay. Okay. I would be, they call him Mike, Mike, right? Micah, yes, sir. And what I'll do is I'll call you back. But for future reference, go ahead and save my number. I can show you any house in Arkansas. So if you have some others that you that you have a question about, or if for whatever reason this one doesn't work out, I'm happy to you know help you with some others. But we cross that bridge when we get there. So that's the part that I wanted to play. That is a little script that I think enough agents don't use. By the way, I can help you buy any house in the state of X, whatever it is. Because we, we have this tendency to make the assumption that other people know how real estate works. Well, some of them do, and that's fabulous. And if you're working with somebody who completely understands how our industry works, great. But how many people really don't know how our industry works and how many people wouldn't know, oh, I got to call the next listing agent or I got to call Zillow again or I got to call whatever the case may be. So maybe it's only 10, 20 percent of the people who don't know that. But wouldn't you like to capture them, too, instead of losing them because they turn around and they hang up the phone with you and they call somebody else? So those little button ups at the end, I think, are really vital. They're huge. They're huge. And, uh, you know, with uh, we, we've been talking about this for two years now, Brian, and, you know, it's only gotten worse where, um, you know, everybody's connected on their phones, mobile apps, websites, advertisements, Facebook ads. There, there's a million and one ways for your lead uh, to end up in other people's pipelines. And it, it happens so frequently. So that's why, you know, I think it's still, I, I, don't, I, would, I don't know if um, NAR or Realtor has done a, a recent study on the number, uh, an updated number of the people who work with the first agent that they meet with. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's gone down as a result. Significantly, I would think. Yeah. And, and so what that means is that we have to, we have to solidify that bond fast, early, and as well as we possibly can. And part of those button up scripts are like, Hey, by the way, this is how it works. You don't need to go out into the cold wilderness. You've already taken a risk on a strange salesperson. I'm right here. You don't put your eggs in anybody else's basket. Right. And here's another thing I can do with that same script, by the way, Hey, you know, Hey, Manny, um, you know, just I want to let you know I can help you buy any house in the state of Arkansas. So please don't worry about that. If you have any questions, and I take it to the extreme, if you see it for sale by owner, if you're driving around, obviously this guy's not going to drive around. He lives in New Jersey. But if you're driving around and just see a house, literally any house, call me. I will be your agent and I will help you have success. So any questions about that? Like, I'm going to make sure that this person gets that I'm their agent. Now, they haven't told me that they're on their agent yet, but we're assuming. And yeah. another thing I'll tell people is like, look, you know, and I'm sure that you, you enjoyed our 20 minute conversation, but my guess is you don't want to be interrogated by five other agents. So if you would like to avoid that, then just call me and I, that way you won't have to deal with a whole bunch of other agents. Give Absolutely. them a reason and make a joke. Like, yeah. unless you want to get interrogated by another 10 agents, just call me back. Oh, okay, great. You know, yeah. And you know, I, I laughed when I heard the guy be confused about 
it was supposed to be Alex calling him. <laughs> yeah, that's that's Zillow, by the way. For those of you who don't buy Zillow leads, every concierge person at Zillow is called Alex. Right. But here's the point. This is why you have to do the button up script. Mm -hmm. The guy doesn't even understand the concept of a third party connecting with an agent. Right. Yep. He thought he was going to talk to Alex. So uh, it's very, very simple for this guy to as soon as he hangs up with this person, get back on the Internet, inquire on something else on some other website or some agent site in your market and end up in their funnel if you don't tell them. And, and here's the thing. Don't do 80 percent of the work and forget the button up and the 80 percent gets wasted. So cool. anyway, um, some good calls there. I think there's some good, definitely some good opportunities to learn from that. Um, let's deal with the, the question. We appreciate the question from Alex. Uh, we asked someone to put in questions, so we definitely want to answer that. Why don't I go ahead and read that? So, th and then we can go ahead and answer it. It says, Hey guys, I'm having an issue when I circle prospect, I open up my dialogue by saying we had an open house last weekend. We received five offers, two of which are buyers and they didn't get the house. Are you willing to sell you, sell your house? Um, if you were going to sell, where would you go and then let them speak? But somehow I'm not having a lot of success. So um, love to hear your thoughts. I've got them as well. Yeah. Uh, so my first question, Alex, is when you say you're not having, not being successful, what do you determine as success? So why don't you chat that in for me? Because if you're trying to randomly call people uh, in around your open house and expect that, I don't know, even one out of five of them are going to be ready to sell their house for you. That is a, that's an unreasonable expectation. So what I would say is it really determines what your success is. If success to you is getting, you know, three email addresses for every 10 people you speak to so that you can then further market to them and nurture them, I think that would be more reasonable success. And maybe one or two out of every 100 people you speak to in most markets who turn into a listing potential within the next zero to say six months, that would be success. What do you think, Brian? I agree with exactly what you said. So I think a lot of people think of circle prospecting is I'm going to call 100 people and then I'm going to talk to 20 of them and five of them are going to list their house with me. I'm exaggerating. That's probably an extreme. But I, would be, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be circle prospecting if it worked that way. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that I think that you can look at. So first of all, I, and Dale may disagree with this, I would tweak your script a little bit. And my script for me would be, hey, Dale, this is Brian with Curse Realty Group. We did an open house and we had we had five people come to that open house, two of them. You know, one of the guys bought the open house. We have two buyers, unfortunately, who are still looking to purchase homes. Do you happen to know anyone in your neighborhood, in your subdivision, whatever you want to use there? that's looking to sell their home because I really would like to help these two buyers find a house in this neighborhood. But when I go to Dale and say, Dale, do you want to sell your house? He's like, what the heck? I was watching Wheel of Fortune in the middle of the day. And now, now this guy's calling me and asking me if I want to sell my house or I'm at work in the, no. But if I say, do you know anybody? It, it That includes them. And really what you're looking for is, well, I don't know anybody, but I've considered sell my house. And I also love what you determine as success because if your goal is to list a house every single day, and that's a great goal, nothing wrong with that, but you're going to have to call a heck of a lot more than 50 people. Like you're going to call hundreds and hundreds and hundreds a day because you're calling them out of the blue. Like they're not a lead. They're just a person you have information for. So again, I love redefining success as a nurture. Like anybody who tells me that they're they're considering selling their house in the next 12 months, that's a win. Now I can do things like put them on a home bot, put them on a CMA drip, put them on a voicemail drip, any of these things that, that I'm building nurture. So yeah. um, short term Alex, circle prospecting is garbage, but yeah, long term it's, it's great. It's got to be long term. You got to capture email addresses. You've got to uh, be able to market to them. Alex said it is about one person per 100 who I convert. There's got to be a better system. There isn't Alex. You know what it is, is you have to be doing more things, other things other than just circle prospecting. Circle prospecting by itself is not a business model. Yes, I agree with that. And by the way, if you add those other successes, if you're converting one out of 100 people, I would ask you how many of those people are you also having nurtures for? Because remember, hopefully you plan on being in the business 6, 12, 18, 24 months from now. You don't have now. Now I've got a nurture. Great. Now I've got somebody who I call once a month or once every three months, depending on how far they are out. And the yep. conversation becomes easier and simpler. And I build, I'm building, you know, um, if you're looking for short term right now business, circle prospecting is horrible. It really yeah, is. It, it, it is. It just, 
here's the script. This is my script and you can give yours too, Brian. This is my script for, hey, do you want to sell your house or do you know anybody who wants to sell their house from Circle Prospecting? And they say no. We need to collect their email address so that we can market to them, right? So that we can stay in front of them and nurture them. And this is what it would sound like, Alex. Got it. Hey, thanks for thinking of that for me. Several, several of your neighbors have asked me to keep them up to date on home sales and prices in your neighborhood. I can email the same stuff to you. What's your best email address? Love that. That's it. Absolutely love it. And you notice Dale didn't say, I can send you some stuff. What's a good email address for you? He said, what is your best email address? Not, can I have your email address? We're making the assumption in that, that they will give us our email address. We didn't say, can I have it? Will you give it to me? He said, I'm doing this for some of your neighbors. What's your email address? I'll do it for you too. Yeah. It's an assumptive close. So not close, bring me up, but it's an assumptive that they want to work with you. So I yeah. love that. So. Uh, dog, we, we have another question. Kelly Baird, before we get done, hopefully yep. I'm yep. pronouncing that correctly. Uh, Kelly wrote, we have had quite a few expireds who say they're going to wait a while to do repairs or rent or whatever, but then they go on the market with a competitor within the next month. Any advice on how to root this out on the call? Yes, Kelly. As a matter of fact, I do have advice on that because I would be one of those competitors that gets them to list. Not being too arrogant, but that's what I used to do all the time. So here's what you're going to do. When they say they're going to wait and they're going to do repairs or rent, you need to, uh, it sounds like what's happening is you're accepting that answer and you're exiting the phone call with maybe a great, I'll follow up with you whenever, when do you think you'll be done, et cetera, et cetera. Kelly, you are no longer allowed to end that call when they say they're going to wait and do something later without getting a face, getting an appointment to go see that property. And it's going to be an appointment to get face to face with them to give them suggestions on what repairs to do or not do so that you can save them money or so that they can get more money when they do put it on the market, right? Uh, meaning save money by eliminating repairs that are unnecessary or which ones to do to get it uh, to get the most money for it. Or if they're going to rent it out, try to get face to face with them. If they would agree that they would sell it, if you had an interested buyer who would make them an acceptable offer, if they say yes to that, you must go see that property and meet them. Okay. That's how you're going to make this stop. Um, because what happens when they're saying those things is you're either not strong enough as a salesperson on the phone to, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you have to convince them to shorten their time on the phone. What I mean is you aren't being strong enough to get them to take a next step with you, whether that's a face-to-face -face or another conversation or a consultation or whatever it is. Somebody's coming in behind you and being stronger and causing them to take that next step with them. 100% agree. And I love, you know, especially the one where they want to do repairs. That's a huge opportunity. Oh, yeah. So, so Dale, out of curiosity, do you have anyone who's going to consult with you on that? Well, what, uh, do, you, what do you mean? Or, you know, yeah. what would you say? Probably no, right? No, I'm just going to go and fix some stuff. My last agent told me that I probably should have painted and put new carpet in. Okay, I'll tell you what. I work with an interior decorator who is also a specialist in helping people um, design their home, not necessarily to live in, but design it to sell. And one of the things that we know is that those homes sell significantly faster. And here's the thing. If you'd be interested, I'd be happy to set up a time for Julie to come over and myself and to take a look at your property and give you some of those suggestions. That is part of my fee that goes with it. So I pay for that. And if you choose not to list with me, then I, I will just, I will, I'll just deal with that. That's that's not something that's required, but I would love to have Julie come over and take a look. Julie's the actual name of our person. So um, I think I wanna, that's a great way. Go ahead. Yeah, that is great. I want to, I want to do a bonus here with Kelly because she's pumping questions in here. Shameless plug, by the way, Kelly, we have a, we have a live training called conversion university. If you happen to be a follow-up boss member, you get a discount on it. Uh, and you want, you'd probably want to put your ISAs into our training. I don't think you're in training with us right now, uh, but I want to role play this. Okay, Brian. So she, uh, Kelly, yeah, Kelly, well, Kelly asked, she said, awesome to the answer we just gave. And then she uh, said, how about when they tell us they are going with another agent? I have two new ISAs. They're struggling with the assertiveness without being too pushy. So Brian, you're an expired. We're into the conversation and you're going to tell me that you're going to relist with another agent. Okay. I'm going to relist with the original or a different one. This says going with another agent. So I'm assuming it's not relisting with the same 
but they're choosing some third agent that isn't us. All right. Okay, cool. So cool. we're going to role play that. All right, Brian, you're just going to, we're in the conversation. You're going to say, Hey, yeah, Dale, I'm, we're going to go with another agent. Yeah, Dale, it's, uh, you know, I'm sure you're great, but I think we're just going to go with another agent we talked to earlier. Oh, got it. Okay. Have you signed anything with that agent yet? No, um, they're coming over on uh, Friday to, to, you know, get our house, get, get things started. Oh, that's great, man. Well, listen, it, it sounds like you've made some headway in the process. How do you know that that's the, the agent that is going to get it done this time? You know, they, they seem like they were smart. I, they, they had sold a bunch of houses in our, in our neighborhood, and uh, they just seem like they're the right agent, to be honest. Okay, great. I'm, you know what, Brian, I'm going to assume that that first agent you hired, you also thought was the right agent. I mean, otherwise you wouldn't have hired them, right? Yeah, good, good assumption. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the way that it goes. Listen, I know this is a huge decision. You and I don't know each other. You've already had a conversation with that agent. Do you think it would be helpful if you could at least compare apples to apples between the way that we do business and the way that this new agent does business just to do a little more homework so you don't make the same mistake twice? Yeah, that, I mean, that makes sense. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I, I'm coming yeah. to your house Wednesday then. Good. Okay. Kelly, is that helpful? Hopefully that is. We're on a podcast, so I guess you can't answer. What do you think, Brian? <laughs> Well, I do. And I think that, you know, I'll actually add just a different, add another word in there. Um, you said it would be helpful to compare. I add, would it be helpful to compare and contrast? And I know that that's not a big deal, but that's just a personal thing I like to say, compare and contrast um, so that you have that. I'm signing up today. Awesome. Kelly, so, <laughs> Kelly said I'm signing hey, up Kelly. today. Yeah, but, we're, we have to read that out, Kelly, for the podcast when we publish this. But yeah, thank that, you for the yeah, we we definitely appreciate that. And I will say this: I'm I, I get I get absolutely no money for this. I, Dale's not giving me a kickback, but it'll be <laughs> worth your time. Um, I definitely suggest that uh, it, it's you know there is nothing more important. It's a funny. Uh, I'll kind of leave my final thought here. There's a a post a good friend of mine put up is about three years ago, and I quote it all the time. And the the CEO the CFO says to the CEO, "What if we spend all this money on these people and?" you know, they end up leaving our company and the CEO turns around and says, you know, what's, what might be worse? What if we don't spend any money and they stay? So the last thing you want people do is to be incompetent, to not, you know, two things happen. They're, they're saying bad things about you inadvertently out there. And also you're just losing deals. So, you know, Go out, spend the money on training. If you don't know how to do it yourself, if you're not, if that's not your strong suit, go and sell another house and then pay Dale to train your people. I mean, that's really what we're talking about. There's so many opportunities there. So, yeah, excellent. Thank you so much, Brian, for the endorsement. Kelly, I'm glad that helped. We'll reach out to you. Uh, let's see, Alex, what was the name of the training on follow boss again, conversion? What? So Alex, uh, if, you're a, if you're a follow boss user, you go to your uh, follow up boss, um, in the top right under the question mark, you, if you click the question mark, you'll see follow up boss university. If you click on that, use your follow up boss um, email address to log in there and you'll see conversion university. The video portion is inside the follow up boss um, university and follow up boss members get a discount on the live portion of conversion university training where you're live with one of our trainers each week actively working on scripting, dialogue, call reviews, all that stuff. So, um, okay, universe, great. I'm going to end this this very long commercial here, Brian. My apologies. <laughs> no worries, uh, man. <laughs> it, it's a valuable asset, and I think people should know about it. So, Excellent. All right, everybody. Great, great seeing you again, Brian. Everybody, I hope you got something out of this. We'll see you all next week. Thanks, everybody.